we're going to look at creating a mail merge diary file using the Office 2010 applications. You'll have downloaded diary files either from filofaxi.com or from mylifeallinoneplace.blogspot.co.uk and you need to have downloaded both a base Word file and an Excel date source file. Here is the Word file on my desktop and here is the Excel file. The Excel file contains all of the dates that are eventually going to merge with the Word file. The Word file simply contains a template of how each view or how each page in the diary should look and then it will do it um, a large number of times to create you a whole year diary set or any other period you like. You can mess with the data in the date source file and restrict that to a month's data or you can even make a five year diary if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to open the Word file to start with. That's where you should start. Now this is in Office 2010 so we have the big ribbon across the top of the screen. If you're using a different version of Word or if you're on the Mac then you'll want to look out, uh, look up one of the other tutorials that Steve has made which shows you how it works in your application because there are differences between the different versions. Now we're going to link to the data source, to the Excel file. You may actually have received an error dialog as you opened this file uh, which asks you to pick a file to link the data to. Uh, you may not have done, but either way you're going to end up in a place where you get some dialogues. So over on the mailing tab I'm going to relink to the data. I'm going to hit select recipients, use existing list, and then it will ask me to point to the file which as we know is on the desktop. So if I go and select the file, it's the date source, and click open. It will now ask me, well on which of the sheets in that file is your dates data? It will always be the top one. Leave the tick in this box to say first row of data contains column headers and then say OK. You're now linked to the date source and you can tell that you are because if you come up here to the top you can click through all the different dates now that are held in the date file for as many dates as you've got so you know that you're now properly linked. When you open the Word document it may look like this, fairly neat. On the other hand it may look slightly different. It may look like this. Now this is Word with its pants down. Um, this is all of the merge fields that are going to make the whole thing work and hold together. Now you can merge your data like this and the resulting output will be absolutely fine. Um, but if you're going to do any work with the template, uh, you may want um, to see it uh, in a slightly neater format. And if you do, that's fine. Just hold down the Alt key and press the F9 button and you're back to a nice clean template with some data in it. Now if all you'd wanted was um, a whole year's diary uh, and you were happy with the standard template as we designed it, you'd probably have downloaded a pre-merged file and, and why not? That involves you doing no work. You're at this place because uh, you want to personalise it, you want to do something different. Maybe you want to put your name on it somewhere or uh, you don't like our colours. Um, so we're going to take the example now of uh, somebody who wanted to turn these month and year lines at the top uh, into let's say purple text. That's something we get asked for a lot. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to select that and make that purple. Select that and make that purple. And here is the strength of mail merging because I've only had to make that change once on the standard template. And when we now merge the data, Word will know that that's what I want it to do with every record. So now that you're all nicely purple, we can move on and merge into the new file. So I'm going to go to the Mailings tab again, and I'm going to go right across to the right-hand side where there's a button called Finish and Merge. You're going to click that, and, and this is very important, click the first option, Edit Individual Documents. If you do anything else, you'll either email them or send them straight to the printer. Don't want to be doing that. You want Edit Individual Documents. 
you can either print all of them uh, which is what I do or you could do current record if you just want to see a, a sort of two page sample to make sure it's okay or you can restrict what you're doing to a particular range uh, I'm going to say all and Word will then create the file for you um, you'll notice down here it's what 56 pages long um, which is about right for uh, a file of this type this is week to a view now the thing about week to a view is that it opens in a two page spread with the rings of your file facts in the middle and therefore you actually need um, the extra space in the template in that middle section so if we have a look at this page here you'll notice that it's set up so that this big gap is down the left and then on the right hand one this big gap is down the right that's not how we want it to work so in order to fix that go right up to the very top of the file um, at the top page and enter a, a manual page break and the easiest way to do that is to hold down the control key and hit enter what you'll notice then is that we'll start with a blank page that's fine that's the facing page when you open up your file effects and when you turn a single page you've now got this page here on the left hand facing sheet with the rings on the right so you've got the Monday Tuesday and Wednesday the second page or the reverse of uh, yes the second page that comes out of the printer is this one here which sits on the other side of the rings and shows you Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday so that's great because actually you've got the rings going down there now in the middle and when you punch that that will be perfect but what you'll notice is that when we now move to the next week's records um, word has reverted to doing it the old way uh, which isn't helpful this is because there's a well we vary on this I call it a bug um, I think Microsoft call it an undocumented feature um, in Word which inserts when you do one of these mal merges and tables are involved um, a section break at the end of each record and what that effectively does is it forces Word to treat the next page as if it's um, an odd numbered page rather than an even numbered page which is a pain we just need to tell Word to take all of those section breaks out and we're going to do that by using find and replace in Word now there's a way to that through the menus but I can never remember what it is so I'm going to go the quick way which is to hold down the control button and press H and I now get this dialogue so in this dialogue the find and replace dialogue what I need to tell Word is what I want it to find and what I want it uh, what I want Word to replace those instances with well, what I want it to find is section breaks and there's a code to tell Word what they are and it's this carrot B the B is lowercase and the carrot symbol you can get by holding down the shift key and pressing 6. It's the little upward facing arrow uh, that you see used as an accent in French characters sometimes. What do we want to replace it with? Nothing, absolutely nothing. We just want them all to be removed. So at this point you hit replace all and Word will go and remove all of your section breaks for you. So when you look at the template again, you'll notice that not only is week one set up with the ring spaces in the right place, but so is week two and week three and week four and week five and so on. In fact, the whole template is. And we're now in a position to send this to the printer. Now, when it comes to printing your inserts, you have some options. Generally, our inserts are set up as A4 documents. Uh, this one's no exception. So if you've got an A4 file of facts, you can just hit the print button now, send it to the printer, um, duplex print it so you print on both sides. You'll get a stack of paper then that you simply punch and put in your A4 file of facts. If, um, if on the other hand you're looking for A5 sheets, you can do that in one of two different ways. If you've got A5 paper and you'd like to do it this way, you can get your printer to scale its output to fit the paper size which is A5 um, and what that will do is it will shrink each sheet so that it, it looks in the same proportion but everything's correspondingly a bit, full, uh, a bit smaller so the same content fills uh, a physical A5 page in the same way that it fills an electronic A4 page on the screen the alternative is to send it to your printer in booklet mode to print it out on standard A4 paper but to print it out as if it were a booklet and what then happens is it all comes out of the printer you simply guillotine your stack of pages in half or use a craft knife to cut them individually uh, and when you stack them up you'll find that the 
correct pages are on the reverse of, uh, of each page and again you just need to hole punch the stack and pop it in your A5 uh, and that's it that's that's the end of it um, Steve and I are quite happy to help you uh, get to this point and, and, and indeed beyond it so if you get into difficulty if you have any problems then um, give us a shout on uh, either of our blogs or on Twitter or on the forums and um, we'll do everything that we can to help you.